Hi, and welcome back to Reading Tea Leaves. I am John Ross, and this is where I take your stock, and I run it through my brew of technical sentiment and macroeconomic tea leaves to let you know what I think of the stock and where I think it's headed. Now, today we're gonna look at 500 stocks without even looking at a single stock. And today's tea is not even really a tea. But I'm excited to tell you about both of these. And uh, before I do that, let me remind you, click the like button or drop us a comment, a question, or a ticker symbol that we can run through the tea leaves next time. And if you're new to this channel, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button or the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of the new content that we publish to the Prosperity Research YouTube channel. Now, uh, as for today's stock, it was recommended by one of uh, you, YouTube users, and uh, you asked us to asked us what we think about Hibs. Now, to be honest, off the top of my head, I did not know what Hibs was. I did not know that ticker symbol. Uh, turns out, Hibs uh, is the S and P 500 uh, Direction Daily three times leveraged inverse ETF. ETF is an exchange traded fund. Now, some important things to know about this. Uh, it is a, an inverse fund moves the opposite direction of the underlying index that it is tracking. So in this case, HIBS will move in, down when the price or the value of the S&P 500 moves up and vice versa. If the S&P 500 is falling, the value of HIBS will rise. Um, that's why people would use an inverse ETF. If they want to bet against the S&P 500, uh, an inverse ETF is an easy way to do that um, without uh, having to be in a different, uh, use a futures account or maybe using uh, put options or anything like that. It's a, just a, a very simple way for individual stock investors to, to make a bearish bet. Now, HIBS is also a leveraged ETF, which means it is designed to move three times faster than the underlying S&P 500 index that it tracks. So if the S&P 500 rises 3%, HIBS will fall 9% or so. If the S&P 500 drops 3%, HIBS will, uh, is designed to rally 9% or so in that same uh, time span. Now, this again is why someone would buy this ETF. If they wanted to make a bet against the S&P 500, uh, they're going to want to buy into HIBS and see the value of HIBS rise as the S&P 500 falls. So this is really just a bearish ETF. Now, there's something important you should know before you dive into a trade like this. Uh, leveraged ETFs have to rebalance um, their holdings and things at the end of each trading session. And that's in order to maintain the leverage that is promised to traders and investors buying into this ETF. Now, what does that mean for you? If you are holding this, uh, this uh, a trade in HIBS or a similarly leveraged ETF, then that rebalancing that happens each day, it's gonna eat away a small amount of value each day from your trade. Now, over time, if you're holding that for many, many days or many weeks at a time, uh, that's gonna add up and that's gonna take away from uh, the gains you can make in an, uh, a leveraged ETF or it's gonna add to the losses that you experience uh, in the trade. Um, so very, very important there that leveraged ETFs are for shorter term trades. Uh, you don't wanna be holding this for a long time, otherwise uh, the potential is just wiped out by the rebalancing that has to happen. All right, now that you know that, let's dive into a chart of HIBs. Now this is a daily chart and a couple things that we should know when we're looking at a chart of a, a leveraged ETF. Um, when it comes to analyzing the price patterns and things, um, I prefer to look at the underlying index of an ETF. Um, and that's because I think I get a truer sense of the, um, of the fear and greed that is taking place on various time frames that is really underpinning how the patterns are unfolding in a stock or an ETF. So here with HIBS, I don't really wanna analyze uh, this price chart as much as I do the S&P 500. Before I move over to an S&P chart, uh, let me just point out the fact that HIBS from its high in March, it has fallen pretty considerably uh, to date. And the biggest thing I want you to realize is that it has fallen through the lows that it made back in February. Now, Hibs uh, February lows, of course, match up with the S&P 500's highs that it made in February. 
The thing is, the S&P 500 hasn't retaken its February high yet. However, this ETF has fallen below its February low. So that just speaks a little bit to uh, the sort of price action that we can see just be based on how leveraged ETFs are designed. Um, so again, something to keep in mind uh, when you're jumping into a trade like this and thinking about your holding periods, your risk and your return potential, etc. So, okay, let's move over to that S&P 500 chart. Now I've drawn in uh, or I've added a couple of the indicators I designed, developed that I like to look at. I'll run quickly through those before uh, throwing some amps or some apex movement patterns uh, on this rally that we've seen in the S&P 500. Uh, the first uh, at the very bottom is the bar indicator. I talked about that. It's uh, the black and red indicator I developed for my apex profit alert trading service. And uh, when the bars are black, it tends to just say that we are in a, uh, a buy setup phase. So uh, we, you know, air, we, we look to be long or uh, at least flat uh, the stock. We, we don't want to be short when the bars are black. However, uh, if the bars were to fall below that blue signal line that is running through the indicator, um, that, would, uh, that would tell us to move from a long position to a flat position and prepare for, uh, to enter a, a sell setup when the bars turn red. So as you can see, we're uh, firmly in black, we're above the exit signal line. Uh, so right now, uh, this indicator argues to be long or bullish on the S&P 500. Now, the indicator, the blue and red indicator above that is uh, a market direction indicator that I created. And really it just kind of gives us context similar to the bar, but it doesn't quite give us the trading signals, uh, the short term trading signals that the bar gives us. Um, and when the, when the bars are blue in this market direction indicator, uh, it just suggests again, the backdrop is bullish for the, uh, for the stock or the ETF that it tracks. Red uh, suggests the backdrop is bearish. So right now we are in a bullish backdrop, a bullish environment for uh, the S&P 500. If that were to turn to red, uh, basically fall into negative territory, then we sort of change our direction, um, change our stance uh, on the broader stock market. Okay, could that be coming? Could, it, uh, could we be close to a time where we change our direction? Well, I wanna draw in some of the apex movement patterns and in order to do that, let me just run through some extension things just to kind of get a sense of what this rally has done. I would draw kind of that beginning impulse, uh, then the correction that we saw, just to get a sense of what that, the, 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 the follow-up move to that, where that should have taken things. So that kind of tells us that, you know, the, the S&P 500, it sort of extended on a three-wave move uh, and then I would drop the A wave in there. So the three wave move that uh, made up that A wave. Then we saw kind of this sideways consolidation, um, kind of a one, then a two, then a one, two, three for the three. Um, so I would draw a B wave in here in this sideways consolidation right about there. So let me, uh, let me move this extension tool out of the way and let me draw in a new one using the A wave we established and then the corrective consolidated B wave, B wave we established to get a sense of where this C wave could go. Now, generally I like to look for a 100% extension uh, of the A wave. So that would mean a C wave would take us to that 100% mark above 3400 on the S&P 500. Now, that is a move of about seven and a half percent from current levels. So pretty significant upside potential. Now, if we don't get that extension, where might this fail? I would suggest it would fail right now at current levels, and that's because the extension has already extended 61.8% of the A wave. That is a very common place for an extension to fail, and for the market, or for the stock, or the ETF, whatever we're looking at, to uh, run into resistance and turn around and fall. So I think we wanna be very careful, or at least somewhat careful, at these levels. The, uh, the backdrop, as I talked about earlier, is still bullish for the stock market, and we still might get additional extension, uh, but we wanna be careful if we see some type of consolidation here that could lead to a, a deeper correction 
um, in the S and P 500. At which point, uh, that's when we want to look to maybe our bar indicator, our shorter term timing indicator, uh, to help get a sense of what the momentum is doing and how we can be playing this. Now, if you're interested in shorter term trading ideas, uh, you can use an ETF like Hibs uh, to bet against the S and P 500, for example. Or if you're interested in being able to uh, to make more precise bets, betting against and for uh, individual stocks, then using options is a good way to do that. Options is, is how I like to trade. It's what I recommend um, in my Apex Profit Alert trading service. Now, this is something Matt Battiali and I designed a couple of years ago uh, to really help our subscribers make triple digit gains in very short periods of time by trading options. Now, if you're interested in, in more uh, information about that or in joining us, Matt has recorded a presentation that you can watch and you can listen to that will give you all the details about what it is and how to join it. All you have to do is click here in the upper right hand part of your screen. Uh, there's a little information bar there uh, to give you uh, access uh, to what we do. Now, um, back to this chart. So say we get some type of pullback here. I would look for uh, a retracement of the B wave first. Uh, something like a 61.8% retracement that could take uh, the S&P back down to 2981, sort of kind of where it broke out. Uh, that would be a natural, reasonable uh, place to see a pullback. Uh, that would mean from current levels about a 7% or so decline. Now, we could see something more substantial. Uh, I would look for a retracement of this bigger term move that we've seen since stocks bottomed out in March. Uh, and if we get somewhere between a 38 and 61% uh, retracement, that's from current levels a 10% to a 18% or so decline uh, from current levels. Now, again, you can be using HIBs to make a bet like this and triple the downside performance of the S&P 500 in a relatively short amount of time. That's what a leverage, triple leverage inverse ETF is good for, but definitely be careful for all those reasons I mentioned earlier. So with all that said, let me jump into today's tea, which is not a tea. It is Yerba Mate, and I wrote about this a couple months ago uh, to some of my subscribers. Um, it's a really, really good drink. And again, not a tea because it doesn't come from the Camellia sinensis plant, um, but it uh, is actually grown down in South America, kind of the Southern Brazil, Uruguay, Paraguay, Argentina, sort of uh, in that area. And uh, what was interesting when I was doing some research about this, it's something I've been, uh, been enjoying for many, many years. Uh, but when I was doing some research about it, I found out that the, the, the Argentin, Argentinian, Argen, the South American cowboys, the gauchos, um, uh, very much drink yerba mate while out on the range. So around the campfire kind of thing, you know, on their treks, uh, you know, herding cattle across uh, the range down there in South America. Uh, they would drink it out of these gourds, which are which are kind of neat. Um, but what uh, has come from from that are these. They now make these metal gourds, uh, which have a metal straw that has a filter on the end. I'll hold it up here for you. And so here on this side is a is a picture of the gaucho. And now my grandfather got this when he was down in Argentina. And uh, I inherited that from him. It is called alpaca silver. That's what it's made out of, which is not silver at all, but it's meant to look like sterling silver. So a really neat piece. I've never had any yerba mate from the, from the gourd. I don't like the idea of sipping through a, a hot beverage through a metal straw, but maybe that's just me. Um, but I do really enjoy yerba, yerba mate. It has a lot of the, uh, the same uh, benefits that a green tea will have, a lot of the antioxidants and things. Um, I believe that it's even sort of on a, on a higher level than that. So even more healthy for you uh, when it comes to, you know, fighting free radicals and, and uh, antioxidants and things. So, but beyond that, a lot of people will drink tea because they don't want the caffeine or they don't like coffee. Um, 
Now, some people who just drink tea because they don't like coffee, they still want some type of caffeine. And I don't drink tea or I don't seek things out because it gives me a caffeine boost. I just seek out what I like and what tastes good to me. Now, yerba mate tastes good to me, but it also kind of gives me that, that focus and that concentration, that edge. It does have some caffeine in it. Um, but I think out of all the different teas I drink, this one most noticeably uh, impacts just how I feel uh, after drinking it. Uh, on Monday, I was drinking some. I had two glasses in the morning before I ever had anything to eat that day. And I was just, uh, I, I, could, I could feel the focus and the comp concentration and the energy levels uh, just from the drink. So um, thought that might be worth sharing. Maybe that's, maybe, maybe that's you. Maybe you're looking for that without getting the, the jitters, as we, we call it, from uh, the caffeine that's in coffee. Maybe you don't like coffee. Maybe you're just looking for something new to try. All right, that's it. I'm going to call it quits. Uh, subscribe, like, comment, leave us a ticker symbol. Thank you so much for watching. We'll talk soon.